Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're going to look at a few key stock market indicators to see if we can determine how overvalued the stock market is right now. We're going to look at the Buffett indicator. We're going to look at the broader price to earnings ratio. And then we're going to look at the Schiller PE ratio. And then at the end, we're going to look at some sectors to see if we can see which sectors are more overvalued than other sectors. Okay, so let's jump into this thing. So first up, we have the Buffett indicator. And basically what the Buffett indicator does is it compares the size of the stock market according to market cap. And we compare the size of the stock market and we compare that to the United States GDP or gross domestic product. The theory here is that as GDP rises, well, it's also logical that the stock market would rise. So if GDP and stock market go up the same amount, well, this would stay about flat. But now if we were to zoom in a little bit just to see, uh, make it a bit more readable, well, we can see that right now, the stock market is up to near its high relative to GDP. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that investing right now is crazy. In fact, Buffett himself invested throughout the history of this chart. We can see that they've, he's consistently invested at various times. Even recently, he bought a company called Dominion Energy. Okay, we'll come back to this one in a bit. But for now, let's switch over to the more traditional price to earnings ratio. This is for the S&P 500. And just so we're on the same page, price to earnings ratio is simply the price of an individual stock divided by the earnings of that stock. Or in our case, we're doing it for the entire S&P 500. So all 500 stocks. So it works essentially the exact same way. It's just uh, on a bigger scale. Now we can see that these recent numbers, it looks like the price to earnings ratio, the overall stock market with the S&P 500 representing the stock market, it looks like it's fairly high. Now we can see that it has been up near these levels in the past. A couple times in history, it's touched around this same level. Now, when we zoom in a little bit so we can see just more recent time periods, well, we can see that right now, this price to earnings ratio is very high. Right now, we have it about 29x, which means that we would pay $29 on average, $29 for every $1 in earnings that this group of companies earns. That's a lot. And if we were to shoot a line across this whole chart, well, we can see that this is above even where we were back when the financial crisis happened. So right now we're paying more than we would have with the financial crisis. So clearly we're gonna have to work to find undervalued opportunities. Okay, so now how about the Schiller PE ratio? So the Schiller PE ratio is a bit unique in that what it does is it tries to smooth out the earnings of the companies and it tries to account for inflation. So basically what we end up with is an average of earnings and then we deduct however, whatever the inflation rate is from year to year. So what's the real return for the stock market and how does that compare on a value basis? And as we may notice, this chart goes all the way back to 1900. And if you're curious, I actually got all this data off of the Yale website. That's where Robert Schiller works. He's the guy who created the Schiller PE ratio and he's a professor over there and they keep all the data, it's easy to download if you're curious. You might also hear this one called the CAPE ratio, which is what I have it up at the top here. CAPE is short for a cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio. Maybe we also hear it called the PE10 ratio. They're all the same thing. The PE10 ratio, that name comes from the fact that they're averaging out 10 years of earnings to try to get rid of some of the cyclicality of earnings in general. So either way, once we average things out, we average earnings out and we adjust for inflation, well, we can see that once again, the stock market is on the high end right now. It's not quite as crazy high as some of the other peaks we see in this chart, but I do think that it's important that we recognize that right now, it's about as high as it was at the peak of the Great Depression. Now, it is a bit lower than it was at the financial crisis, but still, that's pretty high. Okay, so yes, according to each of the three indicators that we looked at, it appears that the stock market is very overvalued right now. I would even say crazy overvalued right now. But that does not necessarily mean that all sectors are overvalued or even that every stock is overpriced. So this is some data that I was able to find for the 11 main sectors. And each of these sectors, this is their PE ratio. Now I should point out that some sectors, PE ratios really aren't that good for us to use. For example, they're really not great for REITs. REIT is short for Real Estate Investment Trust. So this 60 or so X, which is times revenue, I mean, 60 times earnings. Well, that's really not a good number for us to use. So we should probably ignore how overvalued that looks right now. 
Same thing could be said on for financial stocks. Financial stocks, price to book is far better than price to earnings. So again, that might look undervalued according to this, but it's not a great ratio for that sector. So we could probably cross that one off as well. And we may notice that in this energy spot here, I have no number. And the reason for that is right now, this industry is a lot of the companies aren't profitable right now. Oil has oil and gas have really struggled. A lot of these companies are not profitable. COVID has really hurt the energy sector. So you would end up with really a negative price to earnings ratio. And that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I just left it blank. But again, that could be an interesting sector for us to consider since this doesn't mean that all stocks within the sector are bad stocks. This partially explains the reason why Buffett bought Dominion Energy. He did that in 2020. So there could be great opportunities within this sector. Point is, I think it can be a mistake to look at something like the S&P 500 and say, wow, here's the chart again. Look at how crazy overvalued this is right now. I'm not investing at all. That doesn't make any sense. Just because the broader market is overvalued doesn't mean that everything within it is overvalued. We might consider a stock like ExxonMobil. Here's a chart of ExxonMobil. And as we can see on this five-year chart, it looks like ExxonMobil is way down. Are they, good in, are they a good investment right now? Well, they very might could be. They very might could be. They very well may be. It's probably a better way to say it. I actually haven't researched ExxonMobil in a little while, so I'd want to update myself on it. Do we think ExxonMobil is going to come back? Or are they going to continue to struggle? Maybe another company would be another energy company like Diamondback Energy. Once again, big picture past five years, they look way down, but maybe this is an opportunity for us. We really have to go out and try to figure out why they're down and do we think they'll make a turn. When we go back to this sector chart here, well, we might consider other sectors that perhaps could have good individual opportunities. In. Maybe there's some great opportunities in something like consumer staples or maybe utilities. Those look on average, lower than the group. That could, those could be great investment opportunities, Not maybe not from a broad perspective, but certainly we could find individual opportunities. Now, I would hesitate investing in an ETF, something broad-based. We saw that broadly speaking, the stock market appears to be way overvalued. I'm not sure I'd feel totally confident jumping into a ETF like something that tracks the S&P 500, something like uh, SPY or maybe VOO. I would hesitate jumping into the broader market because we saw the broader market appears to be overvalued. Again, I think individual opportunities are the ideal way to go. Now I'm going to continue to do this analysis on a monthly basis because typically when stocks turn, they tend to turn very fast. So I really want to stay on top of how overvalued is the broader market. And I think that if we can get the opportunity, something like we had in March of 2020, where the stock market headed lower fast, well, clearly it's going to be much easier to find good opportunities all across the board or to just jump in and buy something like a broad-based market ETF. Now, in the meantime, I think it makes more sense to focus on refining our research process and I trying to identify individual opportunities. Now, if you're curious how to analyze individual stocks, I actually did a video where I go through eight steps to analyze a stock. Perhaps that could be a good next video for you to watch if you're curious. I got a link right here. I got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.